Hi everyone, my name is Christy Bellardo and I am an environmental educator over at the Mohonk Preserve. Today I bring you the lesson called Graphing Weather Data. This lesson is geared for teachers to do with their students in the virtual online classroom. And it's for students as young as lower elementary all the way through middle and high school. So, how do you graph weather data? Well, where do you get weather data first to graph? Well, did you know that the Mohonk Preserve has been recording daily weather recordings for over 124 years? And that data is accessible to the public online. So I'll show you the few steps that you could go um, to obtain that data. All you would do is grab a computer with some internet access and you would go to mohonkpreserve.org. And then once you get to our webpage website, um, you'll go to the tab, what we do, and then follow it down to conservation science, and then click on weather archive. On the weather archive, we have daily temperature and precipitation readings um, that date back all the way to 2008. However, if you want even more historical data, there's a link on that webpage to go to NOAA's National Climatic Data Center to obtain 124 years worth of weather recordings from Mohonk Lake, okay? So once that happens, you can go ahead and collect, like write down that data. And so, um, I went ahead and looked at our archive and I grabbed some information. So I'll show you what I did. So I made um, a chart or a table, excuse me, um, for the month, the month of March 2020 and I recorded down the daily max and min or the high and low temperatures for each day. And then um, throughout my time in quarantine, I've been looking outside um, my window and I've been recording down the type of weather that I've been seeing. Has it been sunny? Has it been cloudy? Mostly cloudy? Um, rain or, or snow? So then I went ahead and also wrote down that information as well. Now the fun part, graphing it. So I went ahead and I looked at the data and I figured out a few ways to graph this information. All right, can you see it all? Perfect. <laughs> all right, so for my lower elementary, I'm gonna use the type of weather that I created. So I wrote down the types of weather, so sunny, cloudy, mostly cloudy, partly cloudy, snow, and rain. And I went ahead and looked at the data and I counted how many days of the month of March experienced these types of weather. And it looks like partly cloudy and snow had one day and then 18 days worth of sun. So for the most part, it looks like March was a very sunny month. That's good. <laughs> so after that, I then decided to do a bar graph. And this will show how many days um, in the month of March experience all these different types of weather. So I have an x-axis, that horizontal line, and I wrote down the types of weather from sunny to rain. And then I have that y-axis, that up and down line, and I chose the number of days. And then I went ahead and bar graphed, drew bars of how many days each type of weather was in the month of March. When you do your graphs, make sure that you're writing down and labeling the x-axis and the y-axis, giving it a title and also labeling what they are and also units. Remember units like days or Fahrenheit or inches. All right, so for my older students, um, let's look at those high and low or the max and min temperatures for each day of the month of March. So I went ahead and created um, a graph. So on my x-axis, I have the number of days in March, so one through 31. And then on my y-axis, 
I have um, temperature in Fahrenheit as units. <laughs> And then um, I went ahead and I actually graphed two different uh, lines for the minimum temperatures and the max temperatures. And I chose two different colors to kind of correlate between the two or differentiate between the two, excuse me. And I uh, graphed all of the min, the minimum temperatures, and then I went ahead and chose all the max temperatures. And then you know, this is a fun way um, to challenge your students to maybe determine some trend lines, calculate slopes. Um, they could even calculate the differences between the, the max and the min temperatures of each day, um, or even challenge them as they look at this to figure out why there was a drastic temper cha temperature change. Um, maybe there was like a storm coming and maybe we got snow. I mean, looking at this bar graph, we had that one snow day, remember? <laughs> so I'm sure that because there was this really um, big, drop in temperature I'm pretty sure that was the snow day so this is just an interesting way to take data that's accessible to the public online and then finding creative ways to visualize it um, to help you kind of paint the picture of, of what's happening with our weather um, here in our backyard so I hope this was really helpful for a lot of you teachers or parents out there and check out our website and our weather archive page and see you soon. Bye!